Good day, everyone. Today, our lesson continues on globalization and the economy. This is part three, and we continue to look at the Dutch presence in Guyana. Uh, years ago, when the, the Institute of Historical Research held its annual conference, we had been presented with a map from the Dutch archivist, the former Dutch archivist, Dr. Grohl. And in this map, it showed the, uh, what the colony looked like at the time. And it was an annotated uh, map in which we were able to also be informed about what activities took place in the colonies at the time, in the Dutch colonies of Demerara, Esquibo, and Burbies. So this was a gift that we had received from the Dutch archives. Now, today, as we continue our presentation on the Dutch presence in Guyana, what we shall do is continue to look at uh, the role of the Dutch in the colonization and the economy of Guyana. As I would have mentioned, the Netherlands was generally the area from which the Dutch had come. In 1599, Adrian Hendrik, a burgomaster of Middleburg, sent two ships to the Esquibo River, uh, to the Esquibo coast. And the, the Dutch colonists came from provinces of the Sinjin and there, the Sinjin, now the name Vicingen is immortalized in a street in Georgetown. And this is what Vicingen looks like today, Vicingen in Holland, as it's known today. Uh, the, one of the consequences of the Napoleonic Wars was that many of the provinces united and eventually gained established republics, gained their independence and changed their name. But in the period, the time frame in which we are talking about, there were provinces that sponsored settlements, colonizations in various parts of the world. A colony was set upon the Pomeroon by Middleburg, Basingen, and Vair. Now the Dutch Seaborn Empire, there's a very good book by a former UWI uh, lecturer on the Dutch Seaborn Empire. Uh, in 1621, the Dutch had established their presence here. Dutch had more capital than the French and English to invest, hence they spread, they had spread themselves across the globe. In 69, the Truce of Antwerp was signed between the Dutch and Spain allowing a 12-year respite from war. The West India colony viewed its settlements more as trade centers than agricultural colonies. This happened in Esquibo until the end, second half of the 17th century. Here is a map which shows the Dutch Seaborn Empire, as I said, because they were fin more financially stable and stronger than France and England, they were able to establish colonies right across the globe. And here you will see the Dutch presence of Lawrence Tom van der Sandy was one of the most popular governor commanders that had been in Esquibo and his relationship with the Amerindians has been well documented. Okay, uh, the boundaries. The increase in the number of colonists made it necessary to draw a line of demarcation between the two main Dutch colonies of the Quarantine River, Esquibo and Burbies. Later, another division followed when Demerara and Pomeroon became separated from the central unit. To avoid legal complications, the commander of Esquibo, Hendrik Rawl, and the secretary of Burbies, Adrian Van Berkel, agreed that the boundary between the two colonies should be agreed that the boundary between the two colonies should be the Abari River 
or the Abari Creek. And here are images, sorry, of the Abari Creek. Uh, this is the of the Abari Creek. And this is the evidence of the Dutch presence in Guyana. Uh, both Guyana and the Netherlands share a similar problem in terms of flooding and being beneath the uh, sea level. Hence, what had happened was that the Dutch had the coke coils, right? To protect the, the drainage and irrigation. Here's what happens when the coker is not functioning well. This field was completely flooded. Huh? And this is in the 21st century. Here's a flag of the Dutch West India Company. Uh, it's the, and this is the flag that was flown in the colonies wherever they established. The Dutch conducted their trade with the Amerindians through bartering. Under Commander Hendrik Hall, permanent relationships were established with Indians. Goods bartered included hammocks, anato dye, letter wood, cassava, canoes, orian paint, crabbed oil, and slaves. And here we're talking about Amerindian slaves, huh? Bartering again. The Dutch obtained Indian commodities in exchange for European merchandise such as hardware, cockware, fish hooks, glass, pottery, and textiles. The Dutch trading system. The Dutch trading system was organized through trading posts set up in Estepibu in uh, the 1700s, uh, sorry, in 73. There were four posts in the colony on one, the Demara River, two, the Mahaika River, east of the river, four, three, the Pomeroon River as its confluence with the Maruka River, and four, the Kiyuni River. The post of the Mahaika Creek was closed down at the beginning of the 18th century. The one on the Demara River became a regular settlement and a new trading post was set up called Arima Post, right? And uh, it's interesting to note that these posts are, were established in areas that we later by 1980 uh, divided our country into administrative regions, regions. The Dutch trading system, and here are images of the Dutch arriving in the colonies on the boats and these are some of the items that they brought with them you can see the barrels uh in which would have been the crab oil and the other oils and here are the clocks that the dutch are so famous for quite recently finance public works minister dr riyad nur mohammed and Guyana's Public Works Minister Juan Ejel visited the site of the proposed Guyana Suriname River Bridge across the Quarantine River. Now, Suriname also was colonized and settled by the Dutch, but the British uh, eventually succeeded in controlling Suriname, and so Suriname was named after the Earl of Surrey. So the Dutch presence as was mentioned at the beginning of the dis discussion, the Dutch presence in Guyana, Suriname, and the other parts of the world continue on to this day. In fact, I think in South Africa, they uh, are still speakers of Africans. I want to thank you for your listening this up today to this presentation. I am Hazel Wilford, and I have made this presentation on behalf of the Diana Institute of Historical Research. If you have any questions, please write G-I-H-R-I-N-S-T-I-T-U-T -I -I at gmail.com. Okay? Thank you so much for your presence here this afternoon.